dumb mistakes, street fights, and more regrets. So many things we've all done that we wouldn't tell our parents about. These same things you probably wouldn't mention to your children either. How well do you really know your parents if they lived an entire life before you even existed? A great father can also sometimes be a black sheep. Located only one hour from Brisbane, there exists a burial site for an individual known as John Vincent Damon. John passed away on August 6, 2010, at the age of 69, leaving behind a legacy as a prosperous entrepreneur and a loving father. Fast forward to 2020, when John's brother, who had lost touch with him and resided in Missouri, underwent a genetic genealogy test akin to popular services like Ancestry DNA or 23andMe. Initially, no meaningful matches were found, prompting him to patiently wait, hoping that a relative of John's would become curious about their own lineage and decide to contribute their DNA to the database. On August 9, 2022, there was a hit. An individual had submitted their genetic material to the database and also reached out, believing that they might be related due to the shared DNA. This person expressed their interest in learning more about their father, who happened to be an orphan from Chicago. However, John's son soon discovered that he was not conversing with a relative, but rather with a law enforcement officer named Matthew Westover, who had joined the U.S. Marshals in 2015. It is worth noting that the major genealogy databases, namely Ancestry DNA, 23andMe, and MyHeritage explicitly prohibit law enforcement from including crime scene DNA or unidentified remains in their systems as stated in their terms of service. Nevertheless, if a family member, in this particular case, John's brother, grants permission, a search conducted across the vast pool of 40 million DNA profiles within the commercial database can yield a positive hit within a matter of hours. After verifying John's demise, Westover found it necessary to disclose the truth to John's son regarding his orphan father. In his conversation with John's son, I told him, well, he was an orphan. He didn't lie about that, but he killed his parents. That's why he was an orphan. Furthermore, Westover disclosed that the individual known as John Vincent Damon was, in reality, named William Leslie Arnold. Arnold's narrative originates in 1958 when a distressing incident occurred in Omaha, Nebraska. Fueled by his desire to take his girlfriend to the movies using the family car, Arnold resorted to shooting and fatally injuring his parents. He then proceeded to bury their bodies in the backyard and nonchalantly accompanied his girlfriend to a drive-in theater to watch the movie, The Undead. See the tortured undulations of the unwanted virgins. Experience the unbelievable. <laughs> For the following two weeks, Arnold continued his routine as if nothing had transpired. He attended school, maintained his church attendance, and even took charge of his father's business, misleading others by stating that his parents were away visiting his grandparents. However, the situation took an unexpected turn when Arnold's actual grandparents paid a visit to him, his mother, and his father. Once the authorities finally arrived at the residence, Arnold willingly guided the police to the location where he had concealed his parents' remains. The teenager admitted his guilt for their tragic deaths the following year and received a life sentence at Nebraska State Penitentiary. During the next eight years, Arnold demonstrated exemplary behavior as a prisoner, as mentioned in a news statement. However, on July 14, 1967, he and another inmate managed to successfully escape from confinement. Only later did investigators begin to unravel the subsequent chapters of his journey. As per CNN reports, it was discovered that Leslie opted to alter his identity, assuming the name John Vincent Damon, and embarked on constructing an entirely fresh existence. While employed at a restaurant in Chicago, Arnold encountered his future spouse, 
entered into marriage and contributed to the upbringing of her four children. Eventually, he relocated to California. There, he divorced his wife, remarried, and became a father to two children of his own. The family of four embarked on an international venture in the early 1990s, initially settling in New Zealand before ultimately making their way to Australia. Over the next 15 or so years, Arnold diligently constructed a renewed life for himself under the persona of John Damon. Arnold flourished in his career as a prosperous salesperson, renowned for his parenting skills and remained devoted to his second wife until his passing. Simultaneously, the Arnold case underwent a series of transitions as personnel retired or pursued different professional paths. In August 2020, Matthew Westover assumed responsibility for the case, originally as a joke. In March 2023, Westover embarked on a journey to Australia to engage in a meeting with Arnold's son. Additionally, he made a visit to John Vincent Damon's burial site, located at Tambourine Mountain Cemetery in Queensland. During his visit, Westover captured a photograph of the headstone, placing his U.S. Marshal's badge on one side while positioning Arnold's wanted poster on the other. Westover also obtained an officially sanctioned sample of the son's DNA, which undoubtedly provided conclusive evidence establishing the fact that Damon and Arnold were one and the same. The news about Arnold came as a shock to his surviving family members, who authorities said were completely oblivious to his past. Although it's shocking to know that his life began with a terrible crime, his legacy is so much more than that, Arnold's son told CNN. I want him to be remembered for being a good father and provider to us, and instilling in me a passion for music and a drive to always be the best person I can be. But I don't regret doing it. And I'm glad I now know the truth about my dad. I feel like situations like this will become increasingly more common as commercial genealogy databases become more mainstream and accessible. Personally, I am looking forward to more truths coming to light as we rarely get to hear the other side of events from those that have successfully escaped the law. But until next time, keep fearing the living. 